My name is Maria and I'm a 30 year old housewife. As my husband Jack works hard, I decided to support him from home and we have been married for five years now. We don't have children, but we are living happy life together. One day, while I was doing housework, I suddenly received a WhatsApp message from Jack. I wonder what he wants to say and see one short sentence. I love you so much. When we were dating or early in our marriage for about six months, he used to express his love for me. But after five years, this has disappeared. Therefore, I'm more surprised than happy to receive such a message. My husband sometimes expresses affection, and he's kind to me when he's in a good mood. But recently, it has been rare. To add, right now he's at work. I wonder whether something that would cause him to act unusual has happened. But I think, well, if he's in a good mood, that's fine. And I reply, thanks, me too. Jack usually only sends about two responses a day, but now I see that his response is very quick. I'm so happy you feel the same way, Natalie. I'm not letting you go tonight. Is what he was written. What? Natalie? Who's Natalie? I'm Maria. Unable to understand, I freeze for a while, unable to reply. I receive another message shortly after this. I want to spend the rest of my life with you, Natalie. It's a miracle that you're in my life. My wife doesn't even work and she stays at home as if it's her right. I should never have gotten married. You're the one who comforts me and you're such a hard worker. You're nothing like my wife. Okay, so this isn't supposed to be addressed to me. You're cheating on me, I see. For some reason, I'm much calmer than I would have expected. I think I need to start gathering evidence. While Jack still thinks he's messaging Natalie, so I decided to continue the conversation. As he has allowed me to be a housewife, I have to admit there are some times when I know I can't bite back at Jack. But his having an affair is a completely different matter. I continue texting him, pretending to be Natalie. I send him a message saying, Do you really hate your wife that much? And he replies, Yeah, I do. I've never loved her even once. Then why did you get married? It didn't have to be her, right? For the money, she's crazy rich. Is she? Yep. Well, her family is. That's why I'm nurturing her as an obedient housewife. And when her parents are gone, I'm going to inherit so much and leave her. I am in shock. He was nurturing me to be obedient? True. His recent attitude toward me was terrible. And I could tell that it had changed after we got married. I realized that there was no love there at all. And I'm finally starting to feel angry. I originally loved my job and always worked hard. However, Jack asked me to quit when we got married. So I left the company and became a housewife. Even so, he's saying that I'm staying at home as if it's my right. I never asked for this. I need to do something with this anger. So I decided to talk to a private detective to gather evidence. I changed my WhatsApp username to Natalie. And send him another message. But once you have money, will you be able to divorce her? Jack must be so delighted to receive messages from Natalie. He responds straight away Of course I will. I'm gonna say she used all my money doing nothing at home, and the inheritance will be compensation. With all that money, I'm going to marry you. Kiss, kiss, kiss. I'm disgusted. At the kisses, but I replied, Do you really think it'll all work out that well? No problem, she doesn't know that I'm cheating. And all she will be able to do is apologize to me. So, do you have the divorce paper ready or something? I actually already signed everything. There was a time when she wasn't doing housework properly, so I signed the papers. Saying I would submit them if the same thing happened again. Yes, I remember. 
One time, Jack thrust the divorce papers at me. It was when I was sick and had a fever. And he was furious that I hadn't been able to cook that day. Papers were framed and hanging on the wall in our bedroom. I guess the sort of tool to brainwash me. True, since then, I didn't think I've ever cut the corners with the housework, however sick I feel. I feel sorry for myself, understanding that I was acting in exactly the way that Jack wanted me to. But this means, if Jack has signed everything, I can use the divorce papers whenever I want. This makes me feel much better. I have to let him know he's going to regret it if he continues to make fun of me like this. I start to get quite excited and I enjoy messaging my husband, pretending to be his lover. At the same time, I realize that I have lost all the love that I had left for him. And I end our WhatsApp conversation. So, let's get ready to send this deceiving husband to hell. Even though we sent each other several messages, Jack doesn't seem to have noticed he was texting the wrong person. And he comes home and spends his time at home how he usually would. Six months later, when I come home from grocery shopping, Jack's in the living room waiting for me with a sneer on his face. Here we go, I think, and he says, I'm done with you. I want a divorce. He looks down at me while he says this. You're always at home, spending my money, not even doing the housework properly. I have no words and just say, yeah, as if I don't care what he has to say. Jack must think he's being made fun of and he looks annoyed. I've been patient all this time, but I wanted you to say you'd go out to work if you cannot even do the chores properly. I have no idea what this man is on about, but I'll try not to make a funny face. To be honest, I am trying my best not to laugh. Jack continues It's mentally tough for me to be married with you. I'm actually seeing a psychiatrist, you know? He goes on and on in his incomprehensible way. Yes, please do continue seeing a doctor and maybe you can stay in hospital. Thank you very much, I think. Wait a moment, my parents are still alive and healthy though. Does he want to get divorced more than the money? I care so little about my husband that I'm calm enough to have those thoughts in my mind. You'd probably have better life away from me anyway. I guess he just wants to say I'm the one to be blamed for this divorce. You weren't working at all since we got married. So all the money is mine, you understand. It seems he has said everything that he had wanted to say, so I slowly began to talk. Okay, I understand, a divorce. But I actually have something to tell you. I won't listen even if you say you don't want a divorce, you know? I'm inheriting three million dollars. My parents say they want to leave this amount to me while they are alive. Jack must be in complete shock that he stares at me silent with his mouth hanging open. Three million to you? That's part of my property too, right? Of course not. They're leaving it for me personally. We can't, of course, use the money together if we continue our marriage. But you have nothing to do with it if you are getting a divorce. Such a shame, isn't it? Then Jack replies with, Okay, no divorce then. To be honest, I just mentioned divorce to make sure you understood the stakes. He must be crazy. It's so obvious that he only cares about the money. If he's going to change his attitude the moment that I mention three million dollars, he's just so stupid. Oh, did you? Thanks so much. No problem. But I'm afraid we're already divorced, I say. And Jack is so shocked that he says, huh, in a funny voice. I never knew he could make such a noise. It's the first time I'm hearing sound even after five years of marriage. 
I've already submitted the divorce papers. The ones that you kept in the bedroom, I signed them and everything. Hearing this, Jack goes to check on the frame in our room. They're gone. Where are they? As I said, I've submitted them. This man really doesn't understand a thing, does he? You don't want to be with me. You want to be with Natalie, right? With this, Jack is clearly panicking. I tell him about the WhatsApp conversation that we had, and it seems he hadn't realized at all and start checking his phone. He's turning blue. I do my best trying not to laugh. It's difficult to say which day I had a harder time trying not to laugh today or our relative's memorial service. Thanks to you not realizing you'd messaged me instead, I was able to gather so much evidence. I thought you were having an affair with Jess Nutley, but I found out you actually seeing so many other girls. Jack was not only seeing Natalie, but he was in a relationship with many others too. And one of them was a friend of mine. I found out after speaking with the detective that Jack was seeing a close friend of mine as well. I later asked this friend if this was true, and she told me that Jack started flirting with her at our wedding. I was lost for words at this. I looked at Jack's and see he's trying to come up with some kind of excuse. But it's too late. There's nothing he can do. The divorce is fixed already. I've already reached out to all your lovers. I see that some of them are married. So let's see how much they'll request you to pay, shall we? With this, Jack, who's already in blue in the face, turns even paler. You think I have that kind of money? This is unbelievable. True, I told your company too. So I guess you'll be losing even more money. Of course, I reached out to Jack's company as well. He was having an affair with some of the girls at the office too. So they have a right to know. Well, even if you lose all your money, I guess you get to spend the rest of your life with at least one of those girls. So you be happy, won't you? With this, I left the house. I can confidently say that I have no regrets and no feeling toward Jack anymore. Later, I found out that Jack is fired. Some of his lovers were married, as I said, and he is having to pay their husbands a compensation too. He cannot make all the payments with just one job. So in addition to find a new workplace, he's working part-time late at night. It's all his own fault, so I actually think he should be having a harder time than this as punishment. After the divorce, I returned to the company that I previously worked in. I am loving my job and working as hard as ever. However, I haven't worked in five years, so I think myself as a beginner and I'm hoping to learn from my colleagues. Five years with my ex-husband made me realize that marriage is not everything. So I hope to be able to tell the right man apart if there is a next time. But for now, I'm putting my all into my work.